Okay, so uh, recording and um, sort of um, feeling like other people, what if I, you know, uh, uh, I'm feeling like other people are really getting on with their life, contributing in life, and it's uh, more of a struggle uh, for me uh, uh, and from my background. Well, for my, I mean, take what you want, leave what, uh, and leave the rest. But my view is, um, and yeah, you know, uh, if a jealousy thought or if a comparing thought, uh, but I, I found really, really helpful, uh, which really uh, shifted everything on comparing myself in any way to anybody else, is the I, is what Hawkins said from his research, his muscle testing, his kinesiology research, that uh, you know, doing spiritual work is in and of itself, even if it's not recognized by the world in sort of worldly deeds, doing spiritual work is actually a huge gift to the whole world. Because as, as I clear uh, my stuff and I, and I connect to the light within, shall we say, um, and my vibration increases, that's filtered out to the whole world because of the unity of the world, the oneness of the world. So when one goes into the light, it helps lift up everyone else into the light. And so there's enormous power in doing spiritual work. Um, I do agree with Hawkins and Buddha on this world. I mean, this world is not a holiday camp. One isn't sent to, you know, the spirit doesn't choose, hey, let's go incarnate on earth as a holiday camp. I don't think, you know, I think the, any um, <clears throat> spirits with their karmic baggage that uh, say, shall we say, choose to incarnate in this place is not really for a holiday fun camp. It's, uh, I agree with, um, my view is um, with Hawkins and Buddha. You know, it, it, I mean, Buddha said it's a, a world of uh, old age suffering and death. And the only way to get free of that is to, trans you know, to transcend the world and let go of all attachments. And for me, recognizing the witnessing, you know, if I'm not hooked into my story and hooked into the drama of the world, and I, you know, I'm now in that place of total freedom you know, there can be an, a universal compassion for those lost in bondage and identification and separation and duality and, and to share the, the wisdom of, of transcending all this pain and suffering in old age of the world with others. But uh, that, that's the only place where you absolutely transcend suffering in this world if you're currently identified with your body and your story and the suffering that goes on in this world. So for me, actually, just to be incarnated in this world, and not, and I don't, and I also see as well, which really helped me, in not, you know, um, a to see that spiritual work, even if I'm not recognised, like no one, no one knows I do so much spiritual work. I don't get any recognition for it. I'm not out there in the world, like achieving, achieving lots of great stuff and and doing lots of stuff and being recognised and feeling that i'm putting out physical stuff into the world i mean my, my my whole view shifted even if i stay in my room and i'm doing a lot of spiritual work uh you know like uh, dr hugh len i think is a great example of the mystics and uh, hawkins as well mystic you know dr hugh len could be sitting in his room he just clears stuff from his consciousness you know you can give him a, a, i'm paraphrasing not, probably not accurate you can give him a file of all the prisoners in a hawaiian prison who are violent criminals and he can just clean the files, i.e. forgive all their, th all their stuff. And the whole prison closes down, everyone gets well without him having to go and give them a lecture. So that's the power of, of uh, just cleaning my own stuff and, and not even uh, wanting or needing recognition or output in the world. So that made me think, well, if, if, I, do a, if I become a mystic, if I can become a mystic and just clean my stuff and clean what I see in the world without needing to do stuff in the world, that's more than enough for me and to clear stuff in me about needing to be out there producing stuff. So that sort of shifted my context on that. And also, I mean, I did come from the stock market and I wanted a lot of success and recognition in the world. So I do also understand uh, that idea as well. Um, Okay, so uh, those things have helped me. But uh, yeah, I don't think this is necessary. Oh, other people being, um, like other people seem to have less problems and seem to be like really getting on with their life and doing important stuff in their life. Um, and I seem to be stuck maybe just doing a lot, um, clearing a lot of baggage. I think that's, um, 
I think other, yeah, you know, I think that it's, um, I don't usually compare. I mean, I, I just have this thing where other people may have done more spiritual work than me in prior incarnations or less uh, spiritual work. Uh, some people, and it was my perception, if I think someone's got an easy life, um, it's kind of, well, that's my perception they've got an easy life. And maybe they do have an easy life. But I like what Hawkins said. Sometimes you might get a few lifetimes where you incarnate and clear some heavy stuff from your karmic load. And then you might have a lifetime where you come back and it's a bit of a holiday camp, you know, uh, and it's not too bad. You might come back again and clear another heavy load. So I don't necessarily see that someone who's getting a lot, what, I, what seems to be a light lifetime of, of uh, merriment, shall we say, isn't necessarily the, the big picture. You can't see everything. So I thought, okay, well, some people do have light lifetimes. Some people become enlightened and uh, no longer need to suffer. And, um, and some of us are more, you know, going through a lifetime of heavy clearing. Uh, but yeah, I don't necessarily see this world as the holiday camp destination for souls, but more, um, so we say a school or a place of lessons for letting go of limiting ideas, shall we say. Okay, um, 